All right, can I just start by saying I was so happy. Wait, we're not starting. We're not starting. Yeah, we are. <laughs> See? Her name, Margo. And you may not have heard of her yet, but she is about to blow up the music scene. Originally from Toronto, this tall, slender beauty has recently transplanted her eclectic self to La La Land, California. With style that would wow Madonna and songs that get your butt on the dance floor, I couldn't wait to sit down with my new friend, Margo. I want to start off by just saying how happy I was to go to your concert last Thursday okay. at the Green Door and hear that you sounded exactly like your CD. Ah. And this is the thing though, this is the thing. Britney Spears sounds exactly like her CD because when she performs, she puts her CD and presses play <laughs> and then goes out and lip syncs to it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you performed live and it sounded exactly like it does when I push that CD into my car CD player and press play. Oh, I'm glad, thank you. Um, I mean, yeah, that's one thing that I'm really passionate about to make sure that I don't sound like crap. And especially because, yeah, the fashion and all that stuff is great for a show, but you know, one thing, the guys that I work with, Nico, Yako, and myself, we always gotta tell ourselves and remind me that it's like, it doesn't matter how good you look, if you sound like crap, no one really cares. Like, all that stuff goes out the window. So that's I'm, it. I'm glad that you... And that's why I think someone like Lady Gaga has skyrocketed right now. When you mm -hmm. say because she's a performer. Yeah. And people are kind of craving real performances. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think people definitely want to see a show. And for me, that's one of the things that turns me on, you know? Like, that's... I mean, I love different artists for different reasons, but I love, my favorite ones are the ones that really give you a good show mm -hmm. from front to back. And so that's something that I strive to do is give people a good show, especially if they're coming out to see me, whether they're spending money or not. I want to have them leave like, yeah, man, I feel fulfilled and I feel like I was entertained. And they feel like, wow, she sounds like what's on the record and it's not a disappointment. There's no doubt Margo is an original. There are a few others who could rock those fierce clothes and not to mention that hair. However, the industry magazines and blogs compare her to the 80s pop scene and the one and only Prince. She could easily be the prince, or should I say princess, of the millennium. When did all of this start? When? When did you say, I want to be on that stage instead of watching other people be on stage? Uh, I saw Prince perform I Would Die oh, For You. Oh, so it was Prince. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I, saw, so. I saw him perform I Would Die For You with my dad. And, and he loved purple too, right? Yeah, he loved lavender. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Lavender. <laughs> Excuse lavender, me. Lavender. It's like a pretty lilac, but yet it's still kind of sexy. You're, you're there with your dad. Yeah. And did I he saw... take you for, how old were you? Um, I was like uh, eight. Eight. Oh, yeah. eight. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So this was really young. Yeah, I was young. Okay. And I saw I Would Die For You and I thought, like, that's exactly what I want to do. Did you ask your dad to go to the concert or did your dad Oh, this wasn't a say, concert. It was just a DVD. Oh, like, just or, a DVD? Or not a DVD, a tape. You know the tapes that they had then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My or, dad took me, like, we were going to the concert yeah. and we sat down and then we pretended that we were there. Yeah, out. And that's when it started. Yeah. And that's what I saw. And he was on stage in, like, these white pants with, like, the buttons on the side and shimmying. And I just remember, like, as a little girl, like, you don't know what it means when you have, like, yeah. a crush on someone, but, mm -hmm. you know, you feel kind of weird. But then it was all... You got all tingly. Yeah, like, and I'm like, but I'm Daddy, <laughs> so I, I like <laughs> Prince. <laughs> but it was cool, because my dad loved music, and so the fact that he made it, like, a thing that we were going to, even though I wasn't really at the concert, was cool for me. That's really sweet. And that's what made me say, that's what I want to do. How old were you when your father passed? I was 24. Did that change your music in any way? Uh, just made it a little bit harder, and it's weird, like I wasn't able to, when, when he was sick and he was passing, I wasn't actually able to leave the country yet because 
I wasn't sure on like my visa and stuff and coming back and I just I don't know like I just thought he would be fine and I was yeah. actually so you were here in America yeah I was here when he you got, were in New York when he got really sick and I was performing a lot in the city it did, just didn't really register like my sister told me like Margo you gotta just come home just put down the music for like five seconds it'll be there when you get back and it just didn't register and then she called me that night and then she's like he's dying and I'm like what the fuck so I ended up performing one of the songs that I wrote which I don't want to say the name at his funeral okay it's just for me and I've never ever played it again since Margot's father had always pushed her to explore and capitalize on her flair for fashion. She aesthetically always stood out from the others. At one point, Margot thought her future would be in the design world, but quickly realized that this was not her calling. So you didn't have as much as pa passion for the fashion. You didn't have the passion, passion. for the fashion. And you know the funny thing is, <laughs> our, the first year they'd always say, Say, we have passion for fashion. Oh, really? And you're like, passion for, for fashion. fashion. Passion yeah. for fashion. I sat I the hate. back of the class away from everyone. I was like, I have passion for fashion. And but you do have a passion I for do. fashion. I you do. just didn't want to be, I didn't want to be held featured. captive to it. Yes. I didn't want to have to be told what to do. Mm -hmm. And that's not always a good thing. Sometimes you need to have rules, and then you got to learn how to go outside of them. But I have a passion for style and I have a passion for art. And for me, you know, just because you can buy like a great expensive pair of shoes and da da da, that doesn't mean that you've got the art and the style yeah. and the pizzazz. And so, anyway, I got this internship with Betsy Johnson. I left, I was working with her. It was great, but what really turned me on is all the girls that were there were these crazy punk rock girls, totally decked out in fashion. Like, I thought I was yeah. passion for fashion, but not when I met them, I was like, okay, I gotta, it step a, it I gotta step it up. I gotta step it up, you know, because it was a great learning experience. Uh -huh. And then I met these really cool girls, and at the time, um, we'd go to Philly, we'd go to like the, all these cool underground spots in New York, and they would tell me about all these cool rock bands. And before the Yeah Yeah Yeahs were the Yeah Yeah Yeahs, these girls would always, oh, we're gonna go see the Yeah Yeah Yeahs, you gotta come check them out. And I'm, I didn't know who they were, mm -hmm. but they all. Like, okay. Yeah, I'm like, okay, whatever. But you dress well, so I'll come with you. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, I'll come with you and check out your scene. And that's when I really got more into my personal fashion and my personal style. I didn't have it like I thought I did, okay. you know? And I didn't really know much about music like I thought I did. I only knew one kind, you know? Mm -hmm. And so they got me more into like that indie rock kind of scene, which is still not me, but it's good to know about it, you know? But you, you that's how you learn. You explore and yeah. you people show you this and you take this and you do this you and then you make your own thing exactly and probably 10 years from now you're going to look back at this and be like what was i doing and yeah what was <laughs> See, i wearing why was for? i wearing that because you'll have a whole other thing yeah. and i'll be doing the same thing exactly and that's what's so beautiful because you don't you're not who you are yet you're growing to mm -hmm. who you're supposed to be and it sounds cheesy when people say it but i personally understand that for myself like i'm not i'm not anywhere near who i'm going to be i'm just starting to find out you know, who I am every day, whether it's like by writing records mm -hmm. and, you know, and when I saw Betsy on the wall with the Ramones and Blondie and the rock bands, I was more passionate about them yeah. than seeing her, what she's wearing and what she made for them. And so I went back and I was just like, I'm out. Margot said goodbye to her life in Toronto and New York and found herself pursuing her music career full force in Los Angeles. With the help of her producer, Nico, and her toe-headed drummer, Yako, she released her rockin' five-song EP, Animal House. All right, so tell me, now you're in L.A. Yes. You've made the big move to La La Land. What do you think of it so far? I absolutely hate it. I'm kidding. No. <laughs> okay, bye. Let's go. <laughs> it's, it's okay. I mean, I like it because I'm always working. Mm -hmm. I'm always recording. I'm in the rehearsal studio or I'm writing. I don't really go out much. I like going out on Sundays, like during the day, and today's Sunday, which yes. is cool. Um, so I guess it's okay. I mean, I mean, your perception is really your own reality. So mm -hmm. I mean, I can pretty much have fun wherever. Okay. But Why did you move here then? I moved here specifically because of the music yeah, and my that's where teams. You're... Yeah, more based out here. Like Nico, Yako, they're out here, and they have a studio out here, and we can work all the time. Okay. You know, and none of us are shy of hard work, and so. Out here, I feel like I can be in the studio every single day. Yeah. Whereas New York, um, Toronto, it's you know 
kind of a little bit more sporadic, and they're out here, so we can rehearse every it's, day. It's still the city. If you want to perform or be in the entertainment industry, you need to be here. It's, yeah. It's the bottom line. And that's really it, too, because so much more stuff is going on out here. It's, mm -hmm. I don't know, too. Like, even just, like, art. There just seems like there's so much more artists and fashionable people out here right well, now. Than what I always get amazed by is when you go through the city, mm -hmm. you just think, okay, it might, visually the city might not be pretty, cause, yeah. you know, because you've got a McDonald's next to an apartment building, next to a church, next to, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just, LA isn't always the prettiest city. Yeah. But no matter what, you think about all the people yeah. who have come through this city. You, everyone that's been, everyone we grew up with, yeah. all the people on TV, the movies, the songs, it all has come through here. Yeah. So there's got to be something here that's good. There's got to be something that we can pick up pick on. Pick up, yeah. Which is actually, because there's a song that I just redid, Walking in LA, and it's from the Missing Persons. I love them. Mm. Love, love, love them. Margot's latest remake, Walking in L.A., is without a doubt going to be a huge hit. After sitting down with Margot, I realized she is much more than just a flash-in-the-pan pop star. She is a strong woman with a drive for art, style, and music. The world is definitely ready for Margot, and Margot is definitely ready for the world. I literally, like, no, no jokes aside, I literally, when I'm on stage, I feel like I'm hot. Because it's not for me, but like, it's for them. So after all that's done, then when you're on stage, it's really not, I'm not performing for myself. I'm performing for people. Mm -hmm. And that's the high, because it's like you want to give them a good show. That's the whole reason for doing it, to share it. Yeah, to share it with people. So that's like, that's the drug. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that was great, right? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.